Hello friends, my name is some jackass with a YouTube channel, and I am back with more army gals. This should be part 8, if my memory is correct. And when we left off, we're in Andrea's tent. And I could easily just make this another jump cut, but let's see where this goes. So I've never been here. <clears throat> We crawl into her tent together. She's a little nervous when I get into her sleeping bag, but I lay myself down like Dracula and she finally laughs. Hey. <clears throat> when I turn my head, she presses a quick kiss to my cheek. Thanks. She turns away so her back is facing me and doesn't say anything else. I drift off to sleep easily with the extra body heat and leave the next morning before anyone can notice I was there. Well, so that was just like a minute more. Well, that's lovely. Thanks, game. <clears throat> so supposedly we have up to two or three days left. Words drift through the quiet curtain of sleep against the usual backdrop of birds and bugs. <clears throat> Who's yelling? <clears throat> Words are muddled by my eyes open instantly at the a single name. Shelton. Shelton? Did I really mention him? Ooh. I roll on my sleeping bag like a worm, pushing my ears to tense fabric. Having you cry half the night isn't exactly helping anything. It doesn't matter. I don't even know why you're panicking about it. Whatever a false cop mumbled. Maybe a command to be her. Andrea doesn't get hooked up that easily, so why now? What's happening? I push my way out of the tent to look around. Who's crying at that? My emergent draws Lydia's gaze, a permanent scowl on her face, becoming somehow even more scowl like. She'll probably just stayed in the tent. Andrea and Rain stand with her. Right. They turn, they turn to face me like I've just walked into my own intervention. Everything alright? Hey, okay, Captain. Grant's bubbly greeting doesn't quite capture the anger I heard from Andrea earlier. <clears throat> I need to find my toothbrush. Why are you just standing there? Start getting ready. Why am I getting... Why am I the one getting called Captain? Ada is clearly calling the shots around here, and has been from the start. Even if Shelton was still in charge, it's hard to imagine her getting it pulling along with whatever he would have wanted. I start to assemble my tent, trying to get a feel for the group's mood. They have all broken off into their own, starting their rituals and packing up. A chance for me to investigate! Apparently, we talked to Ida now. I saunter over to Ida. <laughs> like me, she finished packing her packing record time, just sliding the bands across her shoulders. <clears throat> hey, she's smiling! At least someone has a pop of things this morning. Trying to maintain order in the ranks? She scoffs. You have no idea. I'd like to. If there's something going on, I think that's, I want to know about it. What do you think is going on? <clears throat> Would I be asking if I knew? It's just a feeling I've got. She studies my face slowly for a moment, then her shoulders shrug. My principle, I never ignore my instincts. Maybe you should use it. <clears throat> Ooh, that's interesting. So now I'm having flashbacks to a certain other experience that I had with her. Not that way. With that, she wanders away to hurry up to the others, barking orders as she goes. What does that mean? She's trying to give me a clue. Yeah! <clears throat> In like fucking 10 seconds. Uh, not literally, guys. The fact that she didn't even answer my question only occurs to me once I'm looking at her back. I wouldn't be looking at the back. Like the jerky delayed frames of a video game, my brain has lag and cut up all at once. I don't have long to puzzle it out for the women that circle me asking for directions. Go northeast. 
I had a weird feeling since I woke up this morning. I write a brief mental checklist. No pain, no headache, sinus is clear. So why do I feel like I want to crawl out of my own skin? Kill the Lincoln Park song! <laughs> Anxiety drapes over me like a 20 ton blanket, stifling and heavy, like something's about to happen. Did I have a dream? I can't remember one, but. <clears throat> I scan up the women quietly, wondering. Still feel silly and superstitious, but I can't help but be concerned. It's going to eat at me until I do something about it. And here we warn Ida. If anyone could stop a potential disaster, it's Ida. She'd probably have just ward off a hurricane with a stern glare. Hot! Makes sense to let her in on it, right? She's taking the rain rains more often than not. I have to get her on my side. She doesn't strike me as someone who'd be comfortable following. <clears throat> I take a few steps ahead, heading up with her to beat her ever serious stride. She's going to think I'm completely insane, though. Hey. <coughs> <coughs> what? I'm gonna marry you. Friendly of all this. Um, I don't really know how to put it. My stalling doesn't impress her, and she eat, and she heaves aside. Do you want something? Uh, well, spit it out. I know we have time to spare, but whatever it is, you may have worked with it over with. I have that feeling. Wait, 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 wait. Shocked, Eda. The only reason I'm doing it is because Photoshop, so I can just get the layers. Okay. I just love that. I love the different facial expressions that Ida makes in particular. Uh, I saw a blush. There. Why is she blushing? Anyways, but what a... Like, a, a, a bad kind of feeling. I don't know. About what? I throw my hands up in exasperation. I don't know that either! If I did, I would have started with that! You sound ridiculous. I knew you'd say that. And why even tell me about it? Well, you should know, just in case. I'll advocate for trusting your instincts, but this doesn't sound like an instinct. It sounds like superstition, which is ridiculous. I don't believe in any of that. Excuse me if I don't take a gut feeling from anyone unsettled because none of us have the luxury of a full meal. I don't need you to take it seriously. I just had to tell you. For my own peace of mind, I guess. She squints at me, letting her silence serve as a question. I wouldn't want anything to happen to them, but she you. And I think I can do something to prevent that, then I will. So that's what I'm telling you. All I can do, I suppose. But I'm always cautious, warnings or not. Someone's gotta watch your back, though. I don't need anyone to protect me. Damn straight! I've handled that all my own since I was little. The factual way she says it, the words she carry more weight than it does. What do you mean? Though, as in the territory she just stepped into, Ida scowls. Did you ever consider? The feeling for that it might be warning not to annoy me. You won't do anything. Mouth opens, a word with but the sheer implication across our features. They're no longer scrolling alongside me. The two of us now squarely face to face. Sorry, would you be stupid enough to repeat that? You're not gonna do anything to me. Andrea and Rain stop several feet away, staring at us warily. Don't make me prove you wrong, Kyle. Damn straight, we're pressing the subject. Go ahead. You might actually do it. I don't know for certain. I'm sure you'd still surprise me. And why risk that? Because I know you don't want to. You've looked out for this group, kept everyone on track. 
The only time I can get a rise out of you is when you think someone might be sitting past your defenses. And maybe I don't have any business asking about you or your past, but I know you don't want to hurt me. We don't always get what we want. I shrug, my hand open on my sides. Go ahead then. Take a swim. Her, her fist clenches, jaw tight. I shouldn't have made this a public spectacle, I realize. She has more to lose now. That's just the argument with Andrea and Rain eyes on her. You're braver than I thought. My laugh turns into a choke and cough as her fist hits my stomach. It takes me a second to double check and realize that she didn't hit me half as hard as she could have. It barely even hurts as much. It just knocked the wind out of me. You still should have mind your own business. I rub my stomach in urge to if I was the best at making good decisions, I probably wouldn't have ended up here. She smirks. Yes! Smiling! Smiling, eat up! You guys know I love that so much. Fair enough. She carefully avoids the gaze of the mothers heading towards our destination. Oh, I love you so much. I follow and quickly realize that Ida has slowed her pace for my benefit. Waiting for me to catch up to her. Alright. I took care of myself until there was no one else to do it. What more of an explanation do you want? <clears throat> I can barely catch the words having to talk back up to Ida's side and match her pace. What? You're actually going to talk about this now? If you're willing to take a punch for it, yes. Maybe I don't want to know how you grow up after all. It's not a sob story, it's just a story. Everyone's got one. I wasn't offering my pity. Good. Smiling! <clears throat> I wait, patient, sensing the explanation is coming. Why did I don't find uh, my mouth up and interrupt her? No dad. Tough streets, mom who worked two jobs. Pretty simple recipe for independence. Not the most detailed description ever. Also a badass. <clears throat> Guys get the feeling why Ida is my favorite character in this entire game. Because there's only one character, two maybe, that we haven't met yet. And Ida is my favorite. <coughs> Seems to be the kind of uh, of what Ida is willing to tell me. The only kind of response I can give is a confirmation. I know she doesn't want any sympathy. <clears throat> we walk in mutual silence for a long time. How's your bad? How's your bad feeling gone away? Yeah. I think you distracted me from it. Maybe you're just tired from being out here. It's exhausting. It's possible, I guess. I don't mention homesickness, even though the thought comes to mind. It was just widening the wound, making miss it all the more. You are stupidly stubborn. You're not the first to think so. Yay! Smile! <laughs> Smile! <clears throat> Let's go, Blabbermouth. You wasted so much energy on running your tongue, it's no wonder you're worn out by the end of the day. You're going to tell me that with the rain right here? Hey! We tread back to a more comfortable territory while rain defends her talkative honor. We set up camp without incident, and my earlier worries are almost entirely forgotten. <coughs> uh, we have a quick dinner, even though the slight food, slight food makes is uncomfortable now. The more we eat, the more likely how close we are for Sorry for days on end. That is an entirely different bad feeling. We wrap up the last of the trash and silence of each between what we ate and what we have left. I hope we're closer to town than it feels like. I'm hoping to improve the mood a little as the tide decides to talk more to me. And it tells me to talk to Ida. Might be wasting my time, but who knows? 
I just need to warm up a time or two. Maybe I can get an exception if I play my cards right. It's just a conversation after all. Hey. I catch your outsider ten. <clears throat> Where should learn all this fire safe and stuff? I motion towards the fire that even seems to be in charge of most of the time. Looks like you know how to put out a fire. Doesn't take a genius. Well, no. But there's some technique, right? I know, I know that the firefighting bear taught me it at one point. <laughs> right before he spoiled me with a bunch of possibilities about forest fires. Just stares at me. You know, Smokey the Bear. That eyebrow is arched in my direction. Or not. I guess through life not knowing about this kind of basic stuff. He turns around for a second and I hear a muffled scoff. Hey. Hey, were you having a go? That surprises you? Yeah, it does actually. I don't know what that means. <clears throat> oh, I get it. I thought you were too serious to invest in a sense of humor. Ah, that smug! I love that smug. Or maybe you just don't know my humor. She slides inside her, inside her tent and I watch her go. But the flap doesn't close. Her hand's still there. Well, you came by to talk, didn't you? Oh, right. I can come in then? No, I'm just letting the cold, the cold wind in because I like my... Well, she suddenly clasped her mouth shut, a tip coming into her cheeks. Too much time around that loud though. She shudders herself and looked man, I can't help but loud. I laugh. No, 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 no. Let me in. Eat up. Do it for my nipples. I see her laugh. The only way you know last more of a singular to resist scoff. Does that mean I'm in your good graces? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Come on. Admit it. I'm your favorite. Her eyes roll. You're rational at least. That's a yes. I didn't say that. Doesn't matter. I'll take it. Did you come here just to annoy me? Because I feel like you're shooting yourself in the foot a bit. Alright, alright. I just need a break from everything that's going on. I thought I'd stop by. I probably, probably have made a pair of leaks here, but I'm really glad, grateful you're here. What? You really stepped up for the whole group. I, you helped us get through this month, for most, I think. And you kept us focused. She shrugs. I do what I can. Why? I don't say something about survival, because I know it. There's more to it than that. What, our basic instincts are enough for you now? Nope! Don't take this the wrong way, but we've made a good effort to look and act like the type of person who would trip someone in a zombie apocalypse. So, why are you looking out for us like a mother hen? I don't act like a mother hen. But her emotional reaction makes her blush angrily. Oh god. I'm gonna make her close herself off all over again. I maybe get a black eye from my troll. Doesn't matter, man! You were in her tent! We all sit in tense silence. Shelton didn't explain why I was here. He didn't even know, really. Oh, are we gonna find out? I've never been this far, so. But, like, I've never seen this in my life. The charges against me were dropped. Lack of evidence. All they had against me was gang related activity. And that landed me here instead of prison. Apparently, my nosing around didn't cause her to look to close up after all. Worried saying the wrong thing would cause her to slam the door on the conversation, I let her talk. Turns out high schools have a pretty regular demand for drugs. This woman was involved in the gang and wanted her to deal in the school. We've known each other for years, joined around the same time. I didn't think there'd be a problem. But she didn't want to do it. She was pretty good at basketball. Had a scholarship lined up. But why did she join? She had an older boyfriend in the gang. And she joined as a stupid freshman. Anyway, she asked for my help. 
Her expression flickers. I turned her down. Told her just to get it together. That. That it was her job. I don't know what happened, but she didn't do it. Panicked and flushed the drugs, probably. She watched while they beat her boyfriend with an inch of his life. After that, if you weren't shunning her, you were harassing her. I had to do the same. I didn't want to, I just... Her jaw clenches as she looks away. A few layers later, they killed her. Knew she was weak. I thought if she might rat, I guess. I was the one who found her and called the cops. That's all. They questioned me up and down, even considering me a suspect because her other friends knew we had a falling out. When they discovered the gang connections, they tried to talk me into a bunch of deals. But the evidence went against it, and they couldn't convict me of anything. Anyway, what's the point of all that just to say when I feel a certain amount of responsibility for people now? I'd rather not have any of you die on me too, not when I can prevent it. Brave and the brave independent tries to creep back to her tone. We'll get through it. We're all responsible for each other. Not just you. You don't blame yourself, do you? I have a responsibility. But I didn't kill her either. And when I find who did, this discussion's already over. But she gives me an icy look. Okay, it is. Looking more satisfied, I can practically see her rethinking her desire to kick me out. Did Nina just imply she'd kill someone? She be the one who cut Shelton's boots? She does have gang history. I had to pick one out of the group. She would have been passing murder. It probably would have been her. But she's never done or say that I made me feel threatened. Granted, she's never said much at all. Well, she has ended up being <laughs> ended up being a death threat. But oh, he will kill her friend, Shelton. What would Shelton have done to deserve this? Haven't we already had enough death? But what? But Shelton did everything. I just wish I knew what happened. Be wrecked. Maybe. Maybe you were the one who found the car. And it was wrecked, but I can't help wonder if there's more to it. She takes out a contemplative look. I did hear him and Rain arguing. But what? I wasn't getting really chatty, so I wondered off. Did just let you leave? Well, no. I was still trying to find a place to hang up the trash, so I went out and did. Sounded well, like there were ways off the camp, too. Couldn't see anything, though. It was too dark. I thought Ida said she went to chop firewood in the fire. Now she's saying she's the one who went out of the trash. Maybe she would wait for a different reason. And why didn't Rain or Andrea ever mention an argument with Shelton? But how could she have killed him? What? Rain, or anyone for that matter. Just some someone sabotaged the car. Like cutting the brakes. That's not a very reliable way to kill someone. How do you know that? Because it just isn't? Do you suspect me? Uh, she has me so flatly that it makes a shiver crawl off my spine. No, I... You do. Or you should. Why? Because I'm the most likely one, aren't I? My history. My attitude. Hey, smiling! What was the thing you said about the zombie apocalypse? I don't blame you if you suspect me. I'm not mad at you for it, or anything. You're keen enough, so I'm sure you would. The consistency bothered me. Even beat his attitude. Something about it seems resigned, but is that about my suspicion? Or is it really about her guilt? I'm not saying anyone did it, you know. But I'm starting to think that maybe she did. Hey! I'm, I was just thinking about it. I'm probably making, art, making something out of nothing. Eventually dissolve into small talk, which is unusual coming from Ida. I learned a lot of things about her. Her bands, her hobbies, her conversations. Uh, our conversation even ends up on which cereals we like as kids. She's normal in that aspect, more normal. But when she's not soft, I don't know. It seems late. I should probably go. 
Wait, Kyle. I glanced at her to see if I searched in her face. Stay. Stay. What? Is such stay too complicated for you? Why do you want me here? I could do with the company. Hey! A confusion must show on my face because she's filing almost an explanation. I don't like the dark very much. Oh. I give her once over just to check that this is actually Ida I'm dealing with. Got a problem with that? Nope, no problem. She smirks and pat place next to her. Okay. I saw it down beside her. And that's why I'm going to stop this episode here. Because we started to look forward to it in the next part. So, thank you all so much for watching. Yes, I'm fucking serious. I'm ending it here. And I'll see you in the next part of Army Gals. Jackass out.